This is the world at some point in time, which I no longer remember. The story goes that people discovered a person's soul could be materialized, also known as Edea, the essence of the soul. At some point, people would become aware of their soul's Edea and could summon it. A guy in a red shirt approached his friend, saying, When I summon my Edea, a sword appears. His friend, astonished, asked to see it. Edea began to be used in daily speech, as people could summon Edea in the form of objects at any time. The guy in the red shirt continued to ask his friend what his Edea was. The embarrassed guy scratched his head and said, Mine is a lump of clay. With this development, people began to be ranked. The guy in the red shirt exclaimed, You're a rank F, huh? And then coldly walked away, saying, I can't be friends with an F rank. Souls, once equal, were now graded leading to a classification of people. Schools were then transformed into tools to serve the nation by placing those with ADA ranks higher in positions of leadership in wars. This is one of those environments, Haida Special High School. At the moment, there's a battle in the school, with a student surrounded by many. However, he confidently smiles, summoning his giant iron axe Edea, and arrogantly says, You bunch of 10th graders can only do this much. Why struggle anymore? Facing this attack, a student in a white shirt summons a lightweight stick ADA to respond, but the difference in rank immediately overwhelms him. The strength from his friend forces the white-shirted student to retreat. He shouts, You've made it through, you loser! Couldn't even hold up after being hit. The red-haired guy gnashes his teeth and roars. Park Ji Sung is pathetic, just standing there without knowing what to do. Park Ji Sung scratches his head with a faint smile, saying, I wanted to join in too, you know, but from above, how could I do anything? He laughs and says, even if I join, I can't help much. The red-haired youth immediately gets enraged to the point of appearing demonic. Once we're done fighting, we'll have a chat, he threatens. Finally, Park Ji Sung is approached for a conversation but it takes an odd turn as the red-haired guy immediately punches Park Ji Sung in the chest and starts berating him. He always talks nonsense like that, doesn't he? Not only is he a redhead, but he's also a guy wearing glasses and a tweed suit. He's definitely a scoundrel pretending to be an intellectual. Then he says we lost because of you. Both of our friends showed dissatisfaction and threw insults. I'm not afraid to punch someone. Park Ji Sung just laughed as if nothing happened. The redhead couldn't believe it. We have to be on the same team with this useless guy. What bad luck. The guy in the vest turns to agree. What do you expect from that loser who ranks at the bottom of the school? It's like you're stepping on shit. Sorry, sorry, but what you guys said is true. Relying on someone at the bottom of the class like me, what's the point? The guy in the white shirt gets angrier, cursing, and punching Park Ji Sung in the face. What use is there for a loser like you? Eleven moments of punches were thrown. Park Ji Sung dodged to the side and said, You want me dead? That's a bit too much, isn't it? Even if I quit, it wouldn't help. But school violence never ends easily. The bullies didn't stop, but continued towards Park Ji Sung. The redhead couldn't believe Park Ji Sung dodged his blow. And the fake intellectual had the audacity to suggest that each person in their group should punch ten times. Park Ji Sung wanted to object, but his status as a loser prevented him. When fighting the bosses, you must be superior. Dodging is the superior move, and playing sick is the grand superior move. Do you think I'll be beaten for an hour like this? There's no other way but to give up. Park Ji Sung ran and shouted for someone to save him, but running and playing sick wouldn't last long. When the others in the class just sat and laughed, Park Chi Sung was quickly surrounded by the hostile gang. Why do you dare to run? Catch that wretch. He's running like a fly. Haha, <laughs> these guides have a sense of measure when fighting. Before fighting, they remind each other not to use Edea. It hurts a lot, so they'll control themselves. They'll only hit you just enough so you won't snitch on the teacher, that's it. You know we're not allowed to use Edea at school, don't you? Avoiding Park Chi Sung takes time. Others don't bother to stop him, but join in cursing. How can a grade F be in our class? I really want to beat him to death right now. It's really embarrassing to have to share a class with this garbage. 
what's the point of him even going to school? After all, he's just a useless grade F. They all dislike Park Chi Sung just because he's a useless grade F. The beating was over, and Park Chi Sung just laughed. Hey, guys, I don't think we lost because of me. This sentence made the two leaders of the gang even angrier. The two thugs advanced towards Park Chi Sung. Why would a grade F like you dare to argue with us? Luckily, at that moment, the teacher came in and dispersed the crowd to announce some good news. The aggressive students reluctantly returned to their seats. Quickly, they turned to ask the teacher what the good news was, still not over their anger at Park Chi Sung. I haven't finished beating him yet, the redhead said. The students were interested in the teacher's good news, saying, Why is the teacher so happy today? Is he finally getting married? The teacher slammed the table to drown out the students' chatter. Be quiet and listen, he said. Park Chi Sung had returned to his seat, feeling uncomfortable. What's going on? Meanwhile, the teacher continued. Our school has finally been recognized by the government. At this point, a student named Byung Young, known for his basic combat skills and his ordinary bullying behavior in school, spoke up in the teacher's tone. What law is that, coming from what comparison? Isn't it always troublesome? The teacher reminded Byung Jung that the break was over and to put his feet down. Byung Jung looked up and asked, Can we stop doing these things? The teacher replied, I'm not the one making decisions, so it's best to get used to it gradually. Then, gesturing to the excellent performance of their senior classmates, the teacher said, From today onwards, our school will become an experimental site for the military system. This means that based on your performance, you will receive military ranks. From now on, you're all comrades. Proudly, he continued, each class teacher has been given a military rank, from lieutenant to platoon leader. So from now on, you will call me platoon leader. Platoon 10, be young, young, you might ask, why are we platoon 10? Because we're in class 10. We're turning the students here into what? Be patient. This is a government proposal, so try your best. During training, you will have to salute as if you were in the military. Now, there might be a bunch of people trying to recruit students from our school. Our students, that means you're all soldiers now. Park Chi Sung sat and pondered. So they'll have to work military style now. Suddenly, he stood up and addressed the teacher directly. If we don't want to do things the military way, what then, sir? Park Chi Sung looked directly at the teacher, his eyes earnest. Of course, the school won't force you. If you don't want to comply, you can request to transfer to another school. The students buzzed with the idea of transferring schools. The teacher nodded at Park Chi Sung. That's right, Park Chi Sung. I hope you'll think carefully about this opportunity. I'm sure you understand the reason. Other students began to voice their concerns about this new teaching style, demanding a reasonable explanation for it. Why are we suddenly turning into a military school? At least tell us the reason, one said. The teacher calmly replied, I've already stated the reason. The students were surprised. All the third-year students are special. They helped our school get appointed as a military school and have all received the rank of sergeant, recognized by the government. Walking past the red-haired student, the teacher tossed him a surgeon's insignia and continued, only the top students in their second year become corporals. The rest are privates. Your ranks will be enforced by your platoon leaders. You can come to me anytime for help. Your future depends on this. Because your insignias won't be on your uniforms, you'll have to be careful. Soon, you'll receive a student handbook to stick your insignias onto. It's more like a military notebook, isn't it? At this point, Park Chi Sung raised his hand. Sir, even though Park Chi Sung addressed him, the teacher continued moving forward. Sir, still, the teacher didn't seem to hear him, continuing to speak. Throughout the entire school, including the first year, there's only one student who couldn't receive the rank of private second class, and that's Park Hee Sung. You'll start as a recruit. The teacher's words hit Park Hee Sung like a bucket of cold water. He looked disappointed, confused by what was happening. After the recess bell rang, Park Hee Sung went to the teacher's room. Upon entering, he asked respectfully, Teacher, did you already know about that, so you're not surprised I'm here? The teacher replied, holding a stack of documents. Oh, it's nothing. I think we should discuss your future. I won't beat around the bush. What do you think about transferring to another school? 
Park Ji Sung was taken aback. Why transfer schools? The teacher explained, The school might become difficult for you, and I know that. When our school becomes a military academy, you might not fit in for long. Why so? Park Ji Sung asked. You have potential that I see, the teacher replied, looking at Park Ji Sung with suspicion, then suddenly burst into laughter. Haha, Park Ji Sung, you're funny. Park Ji Sung thought to himself, this teacher, from the first time I saw him, has been mocking me. The teacher continued, since the ranking system was put in place to classify students, your school life has been very difficult. I know I can't ignore the isolated students like you as much as I'd like. I don't want an F-grade student in my class. Maybe I thought you'd drop out on your own because of being bullied every day. There's no reason to need an F-grade student like you. Park Kisung spoke up, Teacher, I have a bit of curiosity. Do you think souls have rankings? They both laughed. Teacher, do souls have ranks? Of course, the teacher replied. Then Park Chi Sung tightened his grip on his hand and said seriously, I know, but I don't think there's a rank. Later, the teacher returned to the classroom, still wearing his red suit and loafers. He walked in, saying, Everyone, quickly return to your seats. The bell has rung. Our school has now converted to a military school. Each surgeon reports the headcount. The blonde-haired student returned to count the number of people in the class and reported to Platoon 10. Squad 1, total 10 present, none absent. The red-haired boy also raised his hand and reported, Platoon 10, Squad 2, total 11 present, none absent. Park Chi Sung looked at his classmates, thinking, Why do we have to play military? The teacher then asked, Why hasn't Squad 3 reported yet? The surgeon from Squad 3 replied, Sir, we really have to do this. The teacher looked at Byung Jung, the surgeon of Squad 3, and said, don't ask too many questions. Just do it. Byung Jung reluctantly responded, Total 10, absent 2. One is in the restroom. I hope the guy disappears forever. So we have eight present. The class burst into laughter at Byung Jung's report. Hey, Byung Jung, your squad only has nine people. You should disappear too, someone teased. Park Ji Sung chimed in, You should disappear too. You can't even count properly. They deliberately spoke loud enough for the teacher to hear. Do we need to count the trainees too? Someone asked loudly. The teacher pretended not to hear, continuing, So, there's no problem with the headcount. Instead of a regular class today, we'll have an outdoor event. Government inspectors will be mingling with us. Even the school doesn't know where they are. They'll observe how you react to the changes in the environment. Suddenly, a student stood up and said, Teacher, let's get straight to the point. We need to, right? The teacher responded while quickly running his hand through his hair. All right, we'll form teams consisting of freshmen, sophomores, and seniors. The matches will be chosen by the inspectors. Squad 3, where are you? The students grumbled. Aren't seniors supposed to compete against each other? They don't care about us. The teacher raised his hand to calm them down, saying, let's stay calm. Now, Bian Young, you're an idiot grade C, right? Bian Jung, embarrassed, admitted, yes, that's correct. What's your overall combat ability? The teacher asked. Bian Jung snapped, don't ask so many questions. You don't need to worry about my opponents. The teacher nodded approvingly and said, good. Your team will compete first against Squad 1 and Squad 3. Squad 3, you have 20 minutes to prepare for the match. Don't let the trainees beat you. Amidst the teasing from the other students, Park Chi Sung ignored them all, thinking, facing the seniors is making me sick of this. If I zone out, I won't have to deal with it. Bian Jung called Park Chi Sung trash, but Park Chi Sung lifted his head and said, Are you calling me trash, Sergeant Bian Jung? Bian Jung angrily retorted, Your barking is driving me crazy. Do you want to be bullied before the match even starts? Then he turned to An Sung Hu, Senior An Sung Hu, Squad 1, Squad 3, let's show them what we've got. Even though our class has its tricks, it's still hard to win against us. But having an S grade like you babbling isn't helping, is it? Park Chi Sung didn't deny it. He smiled. Whether I'm present or not when we lose doesn't matter. Right, Bi Young Young. Bi Young Young was furious but refused to accept humiliation as an F grade student. 
He even tried to shift blame onto Park Ki Sung for his own demotion. You think I'll let you off easy if I'm demoted because of you? He threatened. But Park Ji Sung calmly replied, I think you're capable enough to lead, aren't you? Bian Jung was livid, demanding to know what Park Ji Sung meant. Hurriedly, Park Ji Sung backtracked, Oh, it's nothing. I didn't say anything. Bian Jung sneered, I can't hit you because you're still a trainee. Park Ji Sung smiled, Well, lucky for me. What's the difference between getting beaten by warriors and getting beaten by a high ranked guy like you? Bian Jung smirked, You'll see. I'll make you the sergeant of our squad three. Can you handle it? Park Ji Sung replied with a smirk. Of course, I'll do whatever you ask. Bian Jung chuckled. All right, from now on, you'll be my meat shield. Got it. Then he dragged Park Ji Sung outside. In the arena, Bian Jung, still unchanging, declared, not hitting, not acquainted. But hitting makes it clear, even if we're not friends. The teacher's voice boomed over the mic. Third squad, first team leader, first squad, first team leader, second team leader, second squad, tenth team leader, third squad, second team leader. Are you ready? An Sung Hu led the way confidently as the third squad's first team leader. The teacher encouraged him, knowing he was a skilled combatant. But before An Sung Hu could respond, the teacher corrected himself An Sung Hu, I mean, team leader An Sung Hu. Show off your skills comfortably. The recruiters are watching. And Sung Hoot nodded. I'll do my best to cooperate with my teammates. I'm sure I'll do well. The signal was given, and the teams took their positions. Each team leader received an armband, which protected the wearer from shocks, but would break upon a certain impact. Bian Jung handed one to Park Ji Sung, saying, Here, take this. It'll help you last a bit longer. If it breaks, you're out. Consider this a lesson in the experience gap between sophomores and seniors. Sophomores to 10th graders have an extra condition. They have to last 5 minutes to win. Park Ji Sung grumbled. Team leader, stop gripping my shirt like that. I feel like you're subordinate. Bian Jung retorted, stop complaining. You're just a shield to me. Park Ji Sung sighed deeply. I'm not even allowed to be an animal anymore, just an object. The students are cowering in fear. With teammates like this, I'm not sure how much longer we can hold out or fight against them. Park Ji Sung pressed the stopwatch for five minutes, silently calculating. If our team wins, is there any chance the old teacher will reconsider my transfer request? The signal sounded, both sides saluted each other. If the teacher says so, let the battle begin, the teacher said. The battle had just begun. Bi Ung Young pulled Park Ji Sung by the collar dragging him across the ground while everyone else stood still, and he kept pulling Park Ji Sung backward. Bi Ung Young, at this moment, only cared about enduring for five minutes, not about the other team members. How can we fight like this? Bi Ung Young shouted, panicked. They're the seniors. We just need to hold out for five minutes, Bi Ung Young ordered. Protect me. Bi Ung Young didn't give any orders. Bi Ung Young must give orders. Quiet down, Team 3, just protect me. If we last five minutes, we win. He only saw Bi Ung Young trembling, shouting for his teammates to protect him. Is this the strategy to last five minutes on the field? Of course, it wasn't going as smoothly as he had thought. The students were quickly taken down by the seniors, and the scene quickly turned chaotic. But they were truly defeated. The bespectacled girl glanced over, and Bi Ung Young was already scared, nearly about to flee. She's looking at me, he said, but the bespectacled girl was getting closer. Block him, Bi Ung Young said desperately. I mean, block her. Park Ji Sung replied, how can I do that, Captain? Bi Ung Young quickly shouted, just block her, this trash. Park Ji Sung suggested, what I meant was, shouldn't we run in a different direction or something? Park Ji Sung was about to suggest running in a different direction, when he suddenly saw the teacher outside smiling brightly, winking, and giving him a thumbs up, saying, the transfer will be handled. This action made him extremely uncomfortable, and he instinctively leaned away from Bi Ung Young's embrace, dodging the attack from the bespectacled girl. There was nothing romantic about this 180-degree turn, only the sight of a sudden armor appearing on the girl, 
and the glasses disappeared. The graceful scene wasn't something everyone could witness. Park Ji Sung immediately blushed with praise for the girl. That was amazing, that was your exit, he said, reacting at his own speed but uncertainly. She said skeptically, don't act dumb. You just reacted to my speed, didn't you? Park Ji Sung pointed to be Ung Young and said, more importantly, your captain is running away. After saying that, he remembered to check the time again. But before it was time, they were both caught. It would be pointless to transfer schools if they were caught before the time was up. He had just over three minutes left, so he still had to stop this girl, no matter what. Using his IQ of 2000 combined with his little knowledge of flirting, Park Ji Sung spewed out a series of foolish words in hopes of delaying her. Can I call you miss? He said, I'm not trying to flirt with you or anything. Oh no, I'm sorry if I made you angry. Then I'll call you senior. The girl's expression remained unchanged as she coldly replied, If you want to prolong the time, it's useless. Summon your idea to fight. Park Ji Sung, still trying to be slick and make introductions to establish a connection, wasn't getting anywhere good. But since fate brought them together, they had to introduce themselves. The older sister lost patience, saying, If you continue to refuse to summon your Eid, I'll fight you myself. Park Ji Sung quickly begged, Please wait a moment, please. But she wouldn't relent, forcefully, making him summon his Ediwaya one way or another. Hurry up and summon it. Your possession seems to be the most valuable compared to your teammates, she said. Indeed, cruel people often live comfortably, while those on the verge of death are not in control. Park Ji Sung exclaimed, Why are you so eager? You should know that a cool head is important. That's what my father tells my mother when he's being disciplined. Park Ji Sung tried to negotiate further. You should compromise before your aggressiveness, sister. All right, all right, I'll show you how to summon it. Can I take it out here? Within three seconds, he awkwardly pulled out a knight from Napoleon's era, stripping down to fight like a soldier, which was the F-grade combat knife, not even as good as a kitchen knife. The girl now felt a headache coming on. Can you not be like this? She hesitated. How can you? Park Ji Sung appeared very comforting to his senior. Where does it hurt, senior? You should go see the nurse, but you keep ignoring her. He continued, just watch. You're the infamous F grade, right? Yes, I'm the infamous F grade, he proudly admitted. It's true, a youth without a shred of shame, even proud to admit it without regret, not sparing words of boasting. But for me, this humble herb is an S grade among herbs. It's normal. The older sister turned and walked away, thinking, I thought enough. How could a loser react like that? Park Ji Sung quickly asked, Senior, where are you going? Disappointed, she said, I thought you had value because of your reaction, but it must have been luck. Wait, don't go. You wanted to see it, and you can't just leave disappointed like this. If you keep going, I'll sneak up behind you and attack. This was her final warning. But who would believe the words of a loser? The girl said dismissively. I have no reason to waste time with you in this battle with a time limit. Park Ji Sung suddenly rushed forward, and the girl was startled. Park Ji Sung thought, I thought she would continue to ignore me. It was indeed an honest senior. When the knife approached, she raised her hand to block it, still unaffected by the armor. Seeing this, Park Ji Sung laughed falsely. He's as tough as he looks. Talking about her armor, the atmosphere in the field became lively again, and the students laughed. Haha, <laughs> even the F-grade senior seems confused. In reality, he didn't cause any damage. Seeing Park Ji Sum's persistence, the girl reluctantly intervened, saying, Even if you have good reflexes, all F-grades are like that. I've confirmed it has no effect. So, let's stop here. Park Ji Sum scratched his head and ears. There are still two minutes left. I should have extended a little more. He looked down at his watch. At this moment, Bi Ung Yum saw the girl approaching him and loudly scolded Park Ji Sung. You trash. You can't last five minutes, can you? Regardless, he still evaluated Park Ji Sung quite highly. Park Ji Sung couldn't even last a minute. When the older sister approached, she scolded the runaway. A coward who ran away and still talks like that? How regrettable. It's a pity that Bi Ung Young's face is made of plastic, 
so he's just desperately trying to save face by threatening the opponent. He said to the older sister, I just went easy on you. You should stop there. Even though I say it, deep down, I'm trembling in fear, silently hoping the older sister won't believe what he says. The older sister said, There's no need to go easy on me. Let's see how you'll perform. If you want to surpass An Sung Woo, prove it. As the older sister followed closely, Bi Ung Young accidentally kicked a rock, immediately feeling a large rock beneath his feet. Today I'm really unlucky, he thought, but then he felt pleased. That rock appeared at just the right time. That big rock deserves to be scattered everywhere. Seeing the older sister frustrated and wanting to end the game, he asked Park Ji Sung, So when will you prove yourself? Bi Ung Young replied, If the senior wants, I'll show you another unusual expression of mine. This caught the older sister off guard and she exclaimed, What's this? At that moment, Park Ji Sung quickly recognized that this guy had hidden his true strength and warned the older sister. He's dangerous. Senior, he's wearing armor. After Park Ji Sung finished speaking, Bi Ung Young lifted a large rock from the ground and ordered it to be thrown, revealing an ordinary B grade AD level object, showing normal performance at the C level. With everyone wondering who would win this confrontation, the students looked worried. She's in year 5, right? You'll be fine, one said to Bi Ung Young. The older sister looked determinedly at Bi Ung Young. So, you're not running away anymore. You're waiting for Eddie Ya to appear so you can use that rock. But seen through his intentions, she continued, But let me tell you, Bi Ung Young, I trust that rock. Now disappear. Please, turn into a road that I can trample on to show my essence. Bi Ung Young said arrogantly, The Eddie Ya of year 5 is good. I, Bi Ung Young, will win. While he was boasting, he didn't expect to be just a worm not catching a fly yet, as he heard a voice behind him. Sorry for a moment, second year student, and Sung Hu said. Immediately after speaking, Bi Ung Young jerked his head, arrogantly collapsing to the ground. Bi Ung Young quickly shouted, green beans and basil. Damn it, senior year five. Attacking sneakily like a coward again? Meanwhile, the older sister struggled to hold the large rock, thinking it was stronger than she thought, but she could endure it thanks to her armor. Suddenly, she heard a voice whispering in her ear, I'm sure I'll catch you. In her surprise, the rock turned into smoke. This was the work of An Sung Hu, but she had nothing to thank the captain for surrounding her. Muttering to herself, green beans, she thought, this is a good opportunity for me to show my worth. Why are you interfering? Captain An Sung Hu swiftly responded. That attack from Kia posed a bit of a danger. I was simply fulfilling my duty, which is to protect my team members. The senior girl from the third year began with a doubtful tone. So, you're saying I couldn't have handled it myself. An Sung Hu quickly clarified. Undoubtedly, you could have resolved that issue already. But this scoundrel wouldn't have stopped there. Just then, Bian Jung also charged towards him. I was planning a sneak attack. Without further words, Han Sung Hu promptly subdued Bian Young. I'll catch you for sure, he declared. Edea, a Class B member, observed the confrontation between the two. Park Ji Sung couldn't help but exclaim, You're being foolish, Captain. It was that remark that caught Park Ji Sung off guard. Noticing his somewhat hostile attitude and assassin like gaze, Han Sung Hu made Park Ji Sung surrender immediately, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. Turning back to Park Ji Sung, An Sung Hu questioned, Before Kia activated Edida, you warned Juin. How did you know? Park Ji Sung hesitated, Our captain was somewhat unable to control his anger, so I decided to intervene because I didn't know what he would do. But his explanation didn't sway An Sung Hu, he remarked, You're right, he's a superb liar. Even though Park Ji Sung had surrendered, An Sung Wu still rushed in with a move, I'll catch you for sure. Park Ji Sung's wrist was caught, and the dagger was immediately thrown away. Still, Park Ji Sung tried to reason with An Sung Wu, please, listen when others are talking. At that moment, another uncontrolled hand of Park Ji Sung prepared to catch the just thrown dagger and launched a counterattack against An Sung Wu to remind him to listen when others are talking. With a determined fighter like An Sung Wu, 
Park Chi Sung's previous action couldn't be seen as just a stroke of luck. An Sung Hu stared at Park Chi Sung with suspicion. Second year student Kia, who are you? Seeing An Sung Hu like that, Park Chi Sung sweated nervously. I'm a member of the second year class 2, squad 10, platoon 3. Park Chi Sung, level F. An Sung Hu exclaimed, Oh, I see. You're just a student. Then, Park Chi Sung realized there was only a minute left, which startled him. An Sung Hu, noticing Park Chi Sung's distracted state, wasn't pleased. He looked at him coldly and asked, Second year student, where are you looking? And Park Jin, why are you trying to prolong the time? He said while pointing, Look over there. Seems like they're all eager to watch me. You're afraid, aren't you, senior? Your intentions are too obvious. So, An Sung Hu immediately caught on to the situation. How unfortunate, he remarked. Park Chi Sung hoped that time would pass quickly, but Captain An Sung Hu had caught on. Are you planning to prolong the time? I really dislike people like you, Park Chi Sung hastily said. Do you think I can do anything alone? No matter how much you say you hate me. He continued, Why don't you try making an effort to defeat me? An Sung Hu asked. Park Chi Sung replied, An effort? I'm just a level F, what can I do? An Sung Hu then remarked, This isn't a warning. It's advice for everyone. In this grand event, the scout school will select students who don't perform well, and those lacking skills will be expelled. Hearing this, Park Chi Sung suddenly felt a chill. So, expulsion, he muttered. That's why our homeroom teacher looked like that, he added hastily. I really don't want to be expelled, he pleaded. An Sung Hu responded, then do things properly. Park Chi Sung stepped forward. If you're my opponent, then I don't know if you'll be all right after this match, he said, a red aura surrounding him. His eyes widened, his blood vessels bulging, and a sinister smile formed on his face. His physical strength tripled compared to his original power, and he could now discern his opponent's vital points and ideas. Now you can see the most effective way to destroy your opponent with your current skills. Only when you completely destroy their idea or take their life can you stop them. You're obsessed with the desire to kill. This is the true murderer, Adia, level S. An Sung Hu calmly encouraged Park Chi Sung. A level F dagger isn't everything Adia has. Maybe he hasn't seen the current situation clearly. Park Chi Sung assessed. An Sung Hu was very surprised by Park Chi Sung's ability to judge the level of Adia. You don't believe it. Do you? It's impossible. Can you really see someone else's idea? He questioned. Park Chi Sung had almost turned into a different person, more frantic and bloodthirsty. This terrifying aura made An Sung Hu cautious. Sorry, I can't hold back anymore. Will you stop me? Park Chi Sung asked. An Sung Hu found Park Chi Sung's bloodlust terrifying. Isn't your emotion a bit too old for your age? He remarked. Park Chi Sung smiled. I knew you'd be fine, senior. I can trust you. Indeed, the spectators below began to complain as the match suddenly stopped. Why is he just standing there? Why isn't he moving? They wondered. Perhaps An Sung Hu felt that Park Ji Sung wasn't worthy of fighting him. Why isn't he moving? I came here to watch him get beaten, they grumbled. At this moment, even An Sung Hu seemed frozen in place, his thoughts racing. It seems like he's not bothering to defend himself, but I don't see any energy openings. It's different from our last encounter. This atmosphere. I don't think I can just leave him alone. Something's odd. The senior girl from the third year worried. Suddenly, she stepped forward and shouted, I request all members to attack. Immediately, a group of third year students rushed in, relentlessly assaulting Park Chi Sung. Where's your determination now? They taunted him. As they advanced, some of the girls pressed Park Chi Sung's head down. He's really heavy, senior, one of them remarked. An Sung Hu quickly intervened, asking Juin, what's going on? She furrowed her brows, it's just like how you protect your team. I want to protect mine. An Sung Hu responded, you don't need to protect him. Suddenly, a realization hit him. We attacked him moments ago, but no one retaliated against Park Chi Sung. His speed and actions were faster than light. Park Chi Sung was truly overwhelmed, unable to react. I don't really approve of this, but why is he smiling? The senior girl asked, puzzled. 
and some who explained, either way, Juin, release your EDUF first. When it's shattered, suddenly, the girl felt her armor breaking apart. Such a swift attack causing this much damage, she marveled. The other group's armors also shattered. Mine too. Why are everyone's armors being destroyed? Could it be accidental? They questioned. At this moment, Park Chi Sun appeared before An Sung Mu, visibly exhausted but mustering a smile. Our team spirit is impressive, senior, he remarked. An Sung Hu looked up at him. Sung Hu asked, Are you back to normal? Park Chi Sung replied, It's been five minutes, senior. Can I move to another place? Next time, I want an uninterrupted match. An Sung Hu nodded and left. Park Chi Sung tried to insist, Next time means, are you okay? But Park Chi Sung, disregarding him, firmly pulled him away, saying, You should do some things before that. It's advice. Park Chi Sung attempted to contact Theo. Wait, I said there's no next time. Everyone just goes straight to the room. Only Park Chi Sung lay sprawled on the ground, sighing heavily. It was a tough day. When they returned to the school grounds, the teacher was taking attendance for the third year squad of the 10th rank third team. Team Bian Jung won. Someone announced. Inside the principal's office, voices could be heard. Ah, why is the advisor here in this wretched place? Someone chuckled. Haha, I came here secretly. Anyway, do you have the requested file? The principal handed over a stack of papers and replied, Here you go. The man holding the documents opened it. When he reached An Sung Hu's information, he paused and remarked, Is this the famous An Sung Hu? The principal laughed. Yes. Gentle An Sung Gu is an outstanding student, even globally. There's no child prouder than him in this school. Although there's no award history in middle school, he always wins every match in high school. Did he accept it? If the child's idea is slightly better, then it's unfortunate. No, if it's just because of the B rank, he shouldn't have gone this far. The man continued flipping through the documents. Suddenly, he stopped and exclaimed, There's an intern here. The principal looked and confirmed, Yes, there's a student lower rank than a freshman. We put the kid into the combat class after his argument. Hearing the principal's words, the man thought to himself, I've asked a few things about the intern, but this is quite interesting. His past profile behind the scenes. That's right, sir, you don't need to read it. The man deliberately flipped to the profile page, saying, Let's see. This is an exceptional case. Losing parents at the age of eight. Perhaps the shock prevented Adia from awakening and was exploited by someone. His rank remained B and F for a long time. The thieves broke into their house when he was ten, and his uncle and aunt suffered significant injuries to their bodies and minds, leading them to be admitted to a mental hospital. As a result, he awakened Adiwa on that day. The man questioned with suspicion. Wasn't Adiga awakened at the age of eight? The principal confirmed, yes, there's a small change. Usually, Adia awakens at the age of eight, but the document says the thieves broke into their house when he was ten, and he awakened Adiwa on that day. A late awakened Adiwa in a special circumstance, but only ranked F. The combat ability is still limited to F until the age of fifty. The man asked again, did he remain ranked F since joining the school? The principal replied, I don't know, but he's remained ranked F since joining the school. The man pondered, even the combat ability of rank F is too much. What's his purpose in hiding his abilities? The man suggested that I meet Park Ji Sung in private. The principal responded, I think the boy will be promoted soon. He's only in rank F, is that right? But counselor, the man began to stand up. You said, yes first, principal. The principal posed a question. Why did you leave the school? We are a military school. The counselor looked a bit confused. He couldn't help but think. Is that such a dangerous question? It's a secret government project, a military plan. I don't know, and I don't want to know. Seeing the counselor's uncomfortable expression, the principal quickly waved his hand. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. The counselor then replied, We have prepared to face the ridicule from the north. But with this system... We hope that there will be students who can help us change the past. Park Ji Sung describes his morning routine. My morning routine goes like this. 
I wake up at 6 o'clock a.m. As soon as the alarm rings, I sit up and stretch. Then I get dressed. I look at myself in the mirror and encourage myself, let's do our best today as well. Once I'm dressed and ready, I leave the house at 6.30 a.m. I open the door and say, let's go. Looking around the school, Park Ji Sung thought to himself, I arrive at school this early because lately, I've had to take care of all kinds of different cleaning tasks and other errands. As soon as he reached the school gate, three people blocked his way. A blonde-haired person asked, Are you a second-year student? I think we don't need to be as well-dressed as he is. Park Ji Sum scratched his head, smiled, and said, That's fine. Another boy pointed at Park Ji Sum and asked, Wait, isn't he the only trainee in our school? Park Ji Sung smiled and replied, Am I that famous already? You guys are exaggerating a bit. A guy standing behind the blonde-haired one said, He looks dumber than I thought. The blonde-haired person covered his mouth and said, I think the people from Platoon 1 are letting their guard down a bit too much. An upperclassman asked Park Ji Sung, Isn't your idea just a sword? That thing is useless. Another person standing next to him asked mockingly, how could you possibly fight some who with that thing? The blonde-haired person joined in. Even he makes mistakes, doesn't he? Park Ji Sung was grumbling while washing the blackboard eraser. It doesn't even clean properly. They even have government support. So why don't they use whiteboards instead of this thing? Park Ji Sung had to clean the entire floor. Since he did all the chores, things happened this way. A black-haired guy with glasses said to Park Ji Sung, I think you really finished your work by running away. Lee Dong Hun also said to Park Ji Sung, Why didn't you do that with us from the start? The guy with glasses patted Park Ji Sung on the shoulder and said, I'm quite impressed. It would be a surprise if you got forced into this, although everything will surely be unlucky. Park Ji Sung thought, after the platoon battle, challenging the third year seniors, my image in everyone's eyes has gradually improved. Park Ji Sung was lying asleep on the desk when Bi Ung Young slammed the desk and shouted, Park Ji Sung, wake up, you piece of trash. Park Ji Sung, still groggy, replied, sorry, did you call me? He thought to himself, is he going to hit me again? Bi Ung Young said, last time, I couldn't get the math materials, so now you go get them for me. Park Ji Sung replied, all right then. Bi Ung Young said, Go right now, I need to copy the answers. Park Ji Sung thought, he's not hitting me. Well, I guess thanks to that, they gradually stopped hitting me. Park Ji Sung was mopping the floor when a blue-haired girl ordered him around. Last time, I didn't get to submit my social studies homework, so remember to submit it for me, okay? A red-haired person passing by also said, Hey, me too. Another person said to Park Ji Sung, Park Ji Sung, later. Return this textbook to the office, okay. Ji Sung thought, but instead, they started giving me all sorts of chores. Park Ji Sung felt tired and sluggish. The bell rang, signaling the end of class. The students in the class cheered, class is over. The teacher shouted, quiet down, everyone. You know today is the last day for you to join a club, right? It's mandatory for second year students, so if you haven't joined one yet, Hurry up and do so. Park Ji Sung held the paper and thought, Which club should I join? Will anyone accept me? The teacher continued, If you don't join any club, we'll have a private meeting with you. Do you understand, trainee Park Ji Sung? The other students laughed and mocked, Park Ji Sung, there's no way any club will accept someone in rank F. Another student said, Maybe they'll make him take an entrance test to see how weak he is. Park Ji Sung thought, all you guys want to do is just make fun of me. He looked at the paper listing the clubs, surprised by the variety. Data analysis, idea emergency rescue, squad battles, individual battles, weapon research, idea practice, combat skills with tigers, ideological struggle training, high-level emergency weapon handling, advanced martial arts, advanced combat skills, enhanced combat, art of war and studying the 36 stratagems. Ji Sung looked at the paper and thought, what are these? All the clubs are related to the military or the use of idea. A student sitting behind Park Ji Sung asked, hey, which club are you joining? Someone responded, I think I'll join the squad battle club. 
The guy next to him asked, How is it rated? A girl said, Wait, let's all go to that club together. Other students were talking to each other. They are rated quite highly, aren't they? I'm looking forward to it, they said. Lee Dong Hun excitedly said, Wait for me, I'm coming too. Left alone in the class, Park Ji Sung pondered, What should I do? I really hope they avoid the limitations of the idea rank. This isn't a club, but groups of people connected together, he thought. Reading a line that mentioned, unrelated to the use of idea, purely for physical enhancement, Jae Sung suddenly felt happy. Thinking, no rank restrictions on idea, and since it looks like a simple physical training club, I think not many people will join. Although it's a bit strange that there's only one club using their own famous gym. In another place, three people were arguing, it's mine, get lost. No, it's ours. Ji Sung still thought, there won't be any problems, right? It stated that it doesn't involve idea use. Seeing the crowd in front of the gym, Park Ji Sung exclaimed, why are there so many people here? Did I come to the wrong place? But he was sure it was the right place. A person in blue suddenly pointed at Park Ji Sung and said, The F rank student from the upper class is here too. Another person responded, You're right. A person in white looked at Park Ji Sung and said, He's in the upper class but is actually a trainee. Should I approach him and ask him rudely? Park Ji Sung looked at the crowd and thought, Most of them are first year students. They aren't required to join a club. So why are they all here? Why are so many of them gathered here? A student suddenly shouted, Over there, the club president is coming out. Another girl chimed in, Really? Where? Others looked on with admiration, saying, So cool. When Park Ji Sung saw the club president come out, he asked, Who is the club president anyway? Seeing something, Park Ji Sung thought, I need to run. The murmurs around him were crazy. So the rumor is true. The club president saw Park Ji Sung and called out, Park Ji Sung. Others continued to admire him. He's so handsome. Senior, I'm a fan of yours. Park Ji Sung asked, Are you the president of the HT club? The club president was Sung Hu. He said to Park Ji Sung, I didn't expect you to come here. I'm impressed, Park Ji Sung. Sung Hu then addressed everyone. All candidates, you can enter and get ready. Park Ji Sung thought, I need to run now. There will definitely be trouble if something happens. Sung Hu asked, Where are you going, Park Ji Sung? Park Ji Sung smiled awkwardly and replied, I think I came to the wrong club. I'll look for it and come back later. Sung Hu said to Park Ji Sung, There are no other members in this club. Are you still not joining? Didn't you come here because you thought there would be fewer people? Park Ji Sung thought, He's right, but... Park Ji Sung replied, but there are already too many candidates. Sung Hu said, come in. This isn't a club that anyone can just join. Park Ji Sung tried to leave and said, you know that I'm a low rank, so I probably can't join. Before Park Ji Sung could finish his sentence, Sung Hu grabbed him by the collar, dragged him in, and said, I'll give you an entrance test now. Do the test with the other candidates. Park Ji Sung screamed, no, I'm fine. Sung Hu announced to everyone, Are all the candidates here? There are a lot of you this year. We'll start the entrance test now. It's simple. You just have to follow the exercises I do until the end. He continued, One set consists of 30 burpees, 30 push-ups, another 30 burpees, and then 30 squats. A girl nearby kept admiring Sung Hu. His voice is so charming. He's doing the test too. He's really strong. A curious man said, Wait, that's just one set. The girl next to him said, We can do it. Sung Hu continued, If you can do 10 sets continuously without stopping, you pass. Park Ji Sung entered, rubbing his ears, and said, Just pretend I'm not here. The second person, too tired, gave up. Number two was too slow and got eliminated. Others gradually dropped out, around numbers five and six. Your form is terrible, you're out, said Sung Hu. Sung Hu continued, you have to do it as fast as I do. Others gradually couldn't take it anymore, continuously collapsing and groaning. I can't do any more. The person next to them said, me neither. Park Ji Sung thought, 30 burpees, 30 push-ups, then another 30 burpees, 
and then 30 more push-ups in one set. He makes it look so easy, and his face shows no signs of strain. Looking at the others panting on the ground, Park Ji Sung wondered, how strong is the monster inside him? The last person also collapsed, I give up. Sung Hu announced, the first group is completely eliminated. We'll start with group two right away. A girl with short bangs fearfully said, What am I doing here? I don't think I can do it. Another person said, Scary, but cool. The girl with short bangs pushed Park Ji Sung forward. You go first, F rank senior. It's too much to have me go before you. Park Ji Sung pushed her back. I don't want to either. Don't push me. Another young man pushed Ji Sung forward. Go ahead, F rank senior. Park Ji Sung stood in front of Sung Hu and asked, You don't look tired at all. Are you sure you're human, senior? The idea that we're only a year apart must be a lie. Sung Hu replied, You shouldn't say that, Park Ji Sung. He then announced, Group 2, start. Park Ji Sung, confused, said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not doing it. As he started reluctantly, he complained, I can't do this. I've trained my physical strength to fight off bullies so I thought I'd be pretty good at things like this. But this isn't something an ordinary person can do. Everyone in Park Ji Sung's group was exhausted. Sung Hu asked, Group 2 is doing well. Should I speed up? Park Ji Sung yelled, You can't do that. The girl with short bangs while eating said, The F-rank senior hasn't dropped out yet. The guy next to her said, Damn impressive. The girl with short bangs having dropped out could only watch. The others standing around commented, At this point, isn't his physical strength at least among the top? Is it really true that his overall combat ability is at F rank? Park Ji Sung, exhausted, said, I've been exercising at home already. Sung Hu scolded him. Quiet focus, Park Ji Sung. A male student sitting outside asked, How many rounds have they completed? The girl next to him replied, This is the seventh round. The girl with short bangs was also impressed. Senior and Sung Hu is amazing. The boy next to her added, The F rank senior isn't falling behind either. Sung Hu said to Park Ji Sung, You're doing well, Park Ji Sung. Park Ji Sung, panting, replied, It's too much. Sung Hu continued, I knew the reaction speed I saw last time wasn't just a coincidence. You'll be able to keep up. Sung Hu sped up, surprising everyone even more. Senior is going even faster now. Incredible speed. Can the F rank senior keep up? Park Ji Sung, doubtful, said, Are you serious? A guy sitting and eating commented, That's too fast. The girl with short bangs pointed at the two, amazed and said, He's doing it. The F rank is keeping up with the national level. The people outside continued cheering, You can do it, F rank senior. Just a little more. Park Ji Sung counted silently, 27, 28, 29, 30. Sung Hu praised him, good job, Park Ji Sung. The others outside cheered, the F rank senior did it. Is he the only one who passed out of everyone? Park Ji Sung, worn out, said, I'm about to die. The onlookers continued to cheer, I'm impressed. Congratulations on passing. Hearing the compliments made Park Ji Sung happy. Well, it's not so bad. I'm being praised, he thought. Sung Hu approached, extended his hand to Park Ji Sung, and said, Welcome to the HC Club, Park Ji Sung. Park Ji Sung shook Sung Hu's hand and replied, Thanks, I guess I'll go rest now. Sung Hu told him, No rush, you can start tomorrow morning. Park Ji Sung, puzzled, asked, Senior, didn't you hear what I just said? Sung Hu replied, the effectiveness of exercise doubles when you have a partner. I've been waiting for someone who can match my level for a long time. Park Ji Sung asked, Match your level? If we do one more round, I'll die. I thought you hated people liking me. Sung Hu said, It took a whole year just to add one member. Park Ji Sung, frustrated, thought, Damn it, he doesn't listen to me at all. I just wanted to join a quiet club, but this club is really a nightmare. Park Ji Sung stayed behind to tidy up the classroom and muttered to himself, I don't want to join any clubs. Why does it have to be like this? What can I do to divert attention away from me? Just thinking about joining a club with Senior Sung Hu. 
one club with only Senior and Sung Hu. That's why I've been bullied and subjected to envy and constant questioning. Park Ji Sung recalled the mocking words of everyone. Why did you get into the honors classroom? But Park Ji Sung thought, if I don't go, then he'll follow me around all day. Let's see. He envisioned Sung Hu calling his name all day in fear. With his bag in hand, Park Ji Sung suddenly thought, should I just break my arm? But no, that's not it. He'll just take me to the medical room and take care of me. Once the treatment is over, he'll treat me to a meal. Someone called Park Ji Sung from afar, but he was lost in thought, not noticing. Being avoided was much better. Park Ji Sung was startled when someone called him loudly. Damn, you'd scared me. Who are you scaring? A student with silver hair asked Park Ji Sung. Are you a student in this class? Park Ji Sung looked at the surprised girl and thought, Do we have such a pretty girl in our class? Park Ji Sung nodded and the girl handed him a card, saying, I see people often use this to introduce themselves. Park Ji Sung looked at the card and read, Private Kim Cho John. The girl asked Park Ji Sung, Why don't you have a title? Why not make one for yourself? Park Ji Sung scratched his head and said, Oh, about that. The girl mentioned her title and name. Park Ji Sung was intimidated and said, You call me what? Kim Cho John explained, You said I belong to Squad 10, right? Tomorrow, I'll join Squad 2. So? Park Ji Sung asked, So you've been transferred here? Kim Cho John replied, Yes, so support me from now on. I still have a few more things to sort out, so I haven't finished talking yet. Park Ji Sung was about to respond when Kim Cho John pulled Park Ji Sung's bag strap and said, Come on, I need to be somewhere else right now. I need a guide. Park Ji Sung thought of Senior Sung Hu and shouted, Wait, I'm in a hurry. Can't you ask someone else? Kim Cho John replied, No, I feel uncomfortable with you. Park Ji Sung said, How long have you known about me? Kim Cho John replied, Just now. Park Ji Sung thought, What the heck, she's scary as hell. Park Ji Sung said to Kim Cho John, All right. I'll guide you. Where do you want to go, young lady? Kim Cho John replied, Take me to Sergeant and Sung Hu. Hearing this, Park Ji Sung exclaimed happily, You should have said that from the beginning. That's exactly where I'm heading. Outside, and Sung Hu was looking for Park Ji Sung and called out to him. Park Ji Sung startled, replied, Senior and Sung Hu. Sung Hu asked, Park Ji Sung, I hope you're not neglecting your training. Park Ji Sung replied, I'm coming here right now. Kim Cho John asked Sung Hu, Are you Sergeant and Sung Hu? Sung Hu replied, Yes, I'm a second year student, so I know how to respect seniors. Kim Cho John replied, So hierarchy is based on skills. That means seniors aren't necessarily stronger than me. It looks like we're on equal ground. Sung Hu asked Kim Cho John, Do you want me to clarify that? Park Ji Sung felt the tense atmosphere and interjected, You two are overwhelming me. Kim Cho John asked Sung Hu, Sergeant and Sung Hu, are you currently dating anyone? Park Ji Sung was surprised by the sudden question. Sung Hu answered bluntly, No. Park Ji Sung said, Come on, senior, you don't have a girlfriend. But I've guessed it because you train every day. Kim Cho John remarked, Seems like it. I really dislike rigid people like you. Sung Hu replied, It's fine, I don't like you either. Park Ji Sung stood in between, puzzled by the situation. Kim Cho John continued, Anyway, whether you have a girlfriend or not, I don't care. If you don't want to be bothered, just go with the flow. Sung Hu asked, What do you mean? Kim Cho John replied, My family is a bit noisy and conservative. For your own benefit, don't ignore it. Park Ji Sung listened to the conversation and thought to himself, What the heck is going on? Who am I and where am I? Kim Cho John turned to Park Ji Sung and said, Luckily he said he doesn't like me. Hey, squad leader, do you want to date me? Park Ji Sung was taken aback. Kim Cho John laughed and said, Our heights match perfectly. I like men who are eye to eye with me. Park Ji Sung, frightened, replied, I really don't know. Kim Cho John looked at Park Ji Sung's expression and said, Cute. What's your rank, 
Adia, and your combat situation? Park Ji Sung hesitantly replied, Both RF ranks. Kim Cho Jan shouted upon hearing this, Can't be. In this world, how could someone be F rank in both? Park Ji Sung insisted, It's true. Kim Cho Jan said, It's impossible in this world. How can someone be F rank in both? 